So I'm working on the uh, what I call machine learning powered experimental sciences, but today uh, I'm not going to talk about it. Instead, uh, what I wanted to discuss is the concept of Jupyter papers for sharing data and code. And uh, so this is uh, the concept that we introduced uh, and demonstrated in 2019, so four years ago. And uh, the goal was that you know it, it could potentially address uh, the issues of reproducibility and transparency in the scientific research, especially uh, research that has a large data analysis and machine learning component. And the idea was that uh, we augment traditional paper structures with code cells, which are hidden by default, but a reader can unroll them and uh, execute and uh, to, to reproduce the results uh, shown in the paper, right? Uh, so in this um, uh, video, you see how uh, they can just reproduce uh, some of the uh, deep learning um, uh, application uh, to this uh, electron microscopy image data. Okay, uh, so uh, again, this was demonstrated in 2019 and there is really nothing fancy about it, uh, but uh, it doesn't have to be fancy uh, to be useful, right? And so why, why are we so excited about it? Well, first of all, uh, this concept uh, guarantees equal access, right? Because uh, we can help ensure that our research is accessible to a wider audience, including those from under-resourced institutions or in developing countries, uh, right? They don't have to pay those crazy uh, journal fees. Uh, and uh, by doing so, we can uh, enable a more inclusive research community, I believe. Uh, of course, uh, this concept can also foster more effective collaboration and knowledge sharing within the scientific community, right? And um, um, uh, help uh, people from all over the world uh, working together on uh, common problems. Uh, transparency, uh, it can promote transparency uh, by making it easier to understand and verify verify the methods and results uh, used in each publication. And uh, by doing so, it can uh, help build in trust within the scientific community and promote uh, the culture of openness and accountability, which I think, you know, something that is lacking sometimes. And finally, you know, probably the most important item is the reproducibility, right? Uh, so this concept allows, uh, uh, it, it, makes, it makes it much easier for others to reproduce the findings of, of a study, which again, uh, it's like, you don't need to go, you know, to, to, to go to GitHub repo, which, you know, is uh, accompanying uh, uh, a paper and then figure out how to install all that stuff. And then maybe you will be able to reproduce some results or maybe not on your machine, right? So this approach makes it just you know, uh, much more easier to do so. Uh, but what are the challenges? Well, the first obvious challenge is an in infrastructure, right? Because obviously, uh, especially if it has a, if your paper has an ML component, uh, machine learning component, it uh, would require, like very likely it would require access to uh, some uh, computational infrastructure like GPUs or at least a single GPU to execute uh, your code. And you know this could uh, pose some challenges. Uh, and one solution obviously are the cloud computing platforms. Um, but one um, uh, caveat here is that someone will have to pay, right? Uh, if researchers are going to use that uh, cloud platform, then they will need to pay uh, somehow for those GPU resources. Um, or if journals want to integrate cloud performs into publishing workflows, then they also need uh, to pay to you know, AWS or Google Cloud Platform. Um, that's why I think they also they are a bit hesitant. Uh, the second thing is incentives. And I think it's not only uh, limited to you know, this particular approach, but I think to everything that has been discussed so far in this session, because yeah, there are so many ways of you know, sharing data and so on, but what are in incentives beyond idealism, right? Uh, what, what are the incentives for researchers to actually uh, do this? Because if you look at the traditional publish or perish models, you know, it awards people for publishing as many papers as possible in prestigious journals. And you know to create something like a Jupyter pa Jupyter paper, or even you know use other ways of sharing data and code, it requires time and effort, and uh, it just may be not worth it for uh, for many researchers. And finally, the uh, the issue of maintenance is something that needs to be addressed because 
you know, your it, again, it's not specific to Jupyter papers, it's specific to code sharing in general, because you know, uh, your Jupyter notebook or your, your Python scripts or whatever require ongoing maintenance and uh, it has to be updated to ensure that they continue to work as intended. And uh, people keep moving from one project to another, from one institution to another, from academia to industry and so on. So one, one possible solution is of course containerization, uh, but it also requires additional technical skill that you know, it's not really a part of the you know, many domain science uh, syllables. Uh, yeah, so, but I, I hope that we could perhaps discuss uh, some of these items and how we can you know, move this uh, idea forward because I, you know, I believe that, that, that you know, these four items are really uh, very important in, in science. So yeah, that's it. Thank you for listening.